The image of the living God as a shepherd is one that has always brought comfort to God's people. Psalm 23, perhaps the most beloved of all the Psalms, expresses that reality. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So that image of a shepherd caring for them spoke very deeply to the hearts of God's people. And our Lord Jesus Christ builds on that understanding when within the full text of John's Gospel today, he declares himself to be not only a shepherd, but to be a good shepherd, which is what gives the title to this fourth Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday. Shepherds were interesting people. They kind of had a mixed reputation, which is why it's amazing, mixing Gospels for a moment, that in St. Luke's Gospel, the first group of people to hear of the birth of the Messiah are the shepherds. People would have scratched their heads and asked, why them? They're not the best group of people. But God reads the heart and knows what is there. And Jesus Christ declares himself not only a shepherd, but the good shepherd. And what does a good shepherd do? What does a good shepherd do for the sheep? A good shepherd does at least two things for the benefit of the sheep. First, he feeds them to pastures of green, Psalm 23 says, to living waters. So the good shepherd feeds the sheep. And the second thing that a good shepherd does for the good of the sheep is that he leads them. He gives them guidance and direction. How does a shepherd, a good shepherd, feed the sheep? Most profoundly, as Psalm 23 says today, he feeds the sheep by also leading them. So the two, to feed and to lead, are tied together. He leads them to green pastures, to restful waters. The shepherd leads and feeds the flock also by leading them through the dark valley. Perhaps that's the part of Psalm 23 that most deeply touches our hearts. That God, that Jesus, the Good Shepherd, leads us through the darkness to those things that will benefit us. How does the Good Shepherd lead the sheep through the valley of darkness to these green pastures. Again, Jesus, the Good Shepherd, our second reading today gives us the answers. He takes us through the valleys of darkness with Him. Through the valleys of the shadows of death, the Good Shepherd walks with, leads, and feeds the sheep. He doesn't ask us to go through our suffering. He doesn't ask us to go through the valley of darkness alone. No, the Good Shepherd walks with us, leading us and guiding us. In our second reading today, St. Peter expresses this reality when he says, Jesus Christ suffered for you. Jesus Christ suffered for you. Jesus Christ suffered for you and for me. Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, suffers with us, with you and with me. The Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, not only suffers with us, leading us through all of that, but he teaches us how to suffer. What is our response to suffering? The Good Shepherd leads us in that way as well. My dear brothers and sisters, I know that in many ways we are all suffering. We continue in these days of pandemic, and I know that there is much pain. There is much confusion sometimes, many questions. We are suffering 
in the face of so many difficult decisions being made for the safety of all. But hopefully, we recognize that we are suffering together. Hopefully, we recognize that the Good Shepherd has suffered for us, and the Good Shepherd also suffers with us. Our Good Shepherd shows us how to suffer, how to deal with suffering. Again, St. Peter in our second reading lifts up that Jesus gave us an example that we should follow in his footsteps. So Jesus, as our gospel today says, calls out to us. The good shepherd knows us by name and he calls to us, beckoning that we follow after him through the valley of darkness by following his example. What is it that Jesus did in his suffering? And what is it that Christ invites you and I to do in our suffering as he calls each of us by name? Jesus Christ did not sin. He did not lie. He did not cheat. He did not insult anyone. He did not threaten anyone did not complain. Instead, Jesus does what he needs to do without complaining. Jesus does what he needs to do by trusting in the love of God the Father. And that strengthens him to face his suffering. That strengthens him that trust in love of the Father, trust in the Father and love of the Father, strengthen Jesus to endure his suffering. And Jesus, in his sinless obedience, gives us an example. Now, we probably, honestly, cannot completely embrace that example because we cannot be sinless. And Jesus recognizes that and accepts that, but he does invite us to the best of our ability when we are suffering to first trust in God as he did and then to do the best we can do with the circumstances presented to us, regardless of the circumstances, to strive to be righteous people and to recognize that it is ultimately by the wounds of Jesus Christ, by his perfect sinless obedience, that we are healed. And to the best of our ability, when we are suffering, we desire to follow in the footsteps of the Good Shepherd. And when we fail, we seek the sacrament of reconciliation and the Lord lovingly calls out to us again to follow in his footsteps. This is very practical advice from the Good Shepherd because we recognize that not only is Jesus with us in our suffering, but we can also be with him in his suffering. How is it? that we can be with Christ in his suffering as we know he is always with us in his suffering. When we seek to meet the needs of others, particularly in these days of pandemic, particularly when there are so many needs at this time, when we seek to the best of our ability to meet the needs of our brothers and sisters who are suffering, we are with Christ in his suffering, for he suffers with them. We can be with Christ in his suffering as we welcome all of the inconveniences maybe that these days continue to place before us. We are with Christ in his suffering as he suffers with others. When we wear cloth masks to the grocery store or whenever we encounter others, for their protection and for our protection as well. 
we are with Jesus Christ in his suffering. When we choose to speak respectfully to those whom perhaps we are in conflict with, we are with Jesus Christ in his suffering. When we respectfully disagree. When we perhaps grab the crucifix because we are so overwhelmed, and there we turn to the Lord, we are with Jesus in his suffering. In all of these ways, we can be with Christ in his suffering as Jesus is with others in their suffering. That image of Jesus as the good shepherd is the most ancient image for Jesus, and it's easily understood. It spoke deeply to the minds and hearts of the people in the early church, for they recognized that they needed guidance and direction, and they recognized that the darkness of the dark valleys was deep, but that the Good Shepherd, if only they would follow after him, would lead them to green pastures. My dear friends, we are, we could say, in a dark valley, are we not? And in this dark valley, we have a choice. We can either be with Jesus in his suffering, be in our suffering, and follow the example of Jesus, or we can give in to our fears, our anger, our contempt, all of those other things that when we are struggling and when we are weak, those temptations that present themselves to us. But in all of this, in all of this pandemic, the gospel tells us, listen for the voice of the good shepherd who knows you by name, who calls you to be all that God has created you to be and loved you to be, even in spite of the challenges that we face right now. My brothers and sisters, hopefully we are all committed. I am committed. You are committed to being with Jesus and to being with one another as we continue in these challenging days. Now, none of us will do this perfectly. We will probably have made mistakes. But if our focus is on the voice of the Good Shepherd, and if our focus is on being with Jesus in his suffering, and if our focus is on being with one another, to the best of our ability, responding to those who suffer, with the Good Shepherd, you and I, we will follow the Good Shepherd through this dark valley to green pastures. That is the promise the Good Shepherd makes to you and to me. And that promise of God spoke deeply to the early Christians. And they held in their minds and their hearts this powerful image of Jesus as a shepherd not just any shepherd, a good shepherd who leads them through the dark valleys, who calls them by name, who lays down his life for them so that they might enter the valleys of green. Amen.